I forgot to mention in my last video that as you can now see, my video now takes up the entire YouTube screen. So thank you very much, Apple. Thank you. Mad Max Fury Road is directed by George Miller, co-written by him, uh, Brendan McCarthy, and Nico Lathuris, and stars Tom Hardy, Charlie Theron, Nicholas Holt, and Hugh Keysburn. And in Mad Max Fury Road, Max, played by Tom Hardy, is captured by these war boys, this army led by Immortan Joe, played by Hugh Keysburn. And Immortan Joe is pretty much like a religious cult-like figure uh, to these war boys because he has access to all this water and greenery in the middle of the desert. Um, but then one day, one of Immortan Joe's generals, uh, Imperator Furiosa, played by Charlie Theron, um, takes a, an oil tanker off course um, and it becomes apparent that she is carrying very precious cargo to Immortan Joe and he just sends his entire army after her and Max finds himself in the middle of all this chaos. Now I was so impressed by the trailer of Mad Max Fury Road that I went ahead and watched the first three Mad Max movies and I really did enjoy all of them um, but I'm actually a bit hesitant um, reviewing this movie in particular because there's just so much I want to say about it that I know I won't be able to articulate um, because for me simply put Mad Max Fury Road is by far the best movie I've seen this year like this is on a whole other level this is really really something special because the audiovisual presentation is perfect in my opinion um, the characters are so well realized and so well acted uh, and, then the, and the direction from George Miller is really just kind of like a master class in directing. First of all, I want to talk about the visual effects in this movie because there's pretty much no CGI. Uh, save for a big sandstorm sequence near the beginning of the movie, most of the visual effects are limited to green screen and coloring, which means that pretty much all the stunts in this movie are practical and they really just make you feel, you know, just absolutely on edge. You feel the danger of all these stunts for the duration of the chase scene, which is pretty much the whole movie. And the cinematography from John Seal is, is incredible. Like, the colors are so refreshingly vivid for a post-apocalyptic movie. Um, but still, these colors are still kind of suffocating in the sense that they're just so bright. Like, in the desert, it's all just, you know, really bright browns and blues and whatnot. And it still feels like you could drown in their, you know, vivid quality. Uh, and there are just lots of amazing wide shots and aerial shots that really kind of capture the endlessness of the desolation that surrounds these characters. Um, and it makes me think that because, you know, this desert has such a natural beauty to it, maybe it's these warlords who make this world feel ugly, maybe it's the people. Mad Max Fury Road also has some of the most lavish and creative post-apocalyptic production design I've ever seen in a movie. Um, you know, there's an impeccable level of detail within every single square inch of the production from the, the twisted facade of Immortan Joe's Citadel to just the designs of every single vehicle in this movie. Like, every single vehicle feels like it has its own personality. That's how good and creative the production design is. The makeup and costume design also is, is excellent also in its ruggedness. Um, you know, for me, it, it makes it feel like all the characters are pretty much equal in the fact that at the end of the day, they're all scavengers, um, really trying to make the best out of what they can find. Um, and, you know, special shout out also to the War Boys for their makeup because it's terrifying. Um, and the violence also in the movie, like in terms of makeup, like the, the, the injuries, the, the makeup for the injuries isn't too uh, gruesome, so it's still kind of accessible, so good job for them. Fury Road is also a very loud movie, um, but even if it gets blaring at times, it's not distracting, you know? Like for me, the sound really is there to serve. It, 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 it's, it serves to terrify and immerse you into this world as every single roar of an engine, every single gunshot sounds so painful and so immediate, like it's right next to your ear. Um, and I can only imagine just like how much of a nightmare it must have been in the sound mixing room to really balance the levels of all the vehicles while dealing with dialogue and music and they managed to pull it off really well. And the music from Junkie XL has moments of really tragic beauty and has moments of triumph but mostly it's you know just absolute edge of your seat anxiety like this this the music here just really keeps things moving um shout out also to the australian musician called iota who plays the doof warrior in this movie he's the guy who, who's playing the electric guitar with the flames coming out he's he's amazing the editing here by margaret sixel is incredible that it, it helps build the world and develop character relationships even when nothing is being said again just through like looks people give each other and whatnot um and in fact, like George Miller is planning to put out like a silent 
cut of this movie on the Blu-ray, which which really makes sense for this kind of movie because you really don't need the dialogue. Uh, the pacing never lets up from the very beginning. Um, you know, it's a two-hour long car chase, but every single moment of action is is cut together so well that you can really kind of clearly follow everything through all the chaos and appreciate the stunt work better as well. Uh, the characters are all very balanced throughout the movie, so it really does feel like they're each of them is the star of their own character arc. It's not just Furiosa stealing the show. I think Max has a full arc. I think Nux has a full arc. And Mad Max Fury Road has a very simple plot, but I think it really works because you needed the simple plot for this kind of movie because the, sim the simplicity of the plot helps balance just the sheer number of things happening on screen, the amount of detail that's poured into everything. Like Ultimately, also, the story is really about simple things against a backdrop of an incredibly rich and complicated world and it only makes sense to me that they focus on the simpler things. Uh, either, like I mentioned, there's not that much dialogue in the movie, but the dialogue that is there has so much unique personality to it. It's just so quotable because it's so unique um, without being alienating. You know, it doesn't sound like a bunch of in-jokes. Um, and you, you know you have good characters when they have fully defined personalities without necessarily having them say a lot. Um, and, you know, really actions do speak louder than words for the characters here and just like how they have different dynamics with different characters throughout the movie. And in terms of acting, I love the fact that Tom Hardy is not trying to imitate Mel Gibson's portrayal of Max. Um, so he really is doing his own version of this character, but at the same time, you can also view his portrayal as just a natural progression from where we left Max off at Beyond Thunderdome because he's a lot more animalistic in this movie, he grunts a lot but he's still extremely vulnerable even more than before and I love that he was able to uh, you know, really show that while still being really, really cool at fighting. Uh, Nicholas Holt as Nux, as this, this war boy, he's wonderfully sympathetic. He's very, he's, he's also downright heartbreaking at times because you really learn to love him really early on because he's pretty much a child soldier. This guy is just traumatized beyond belief. He doesn't know what to believe. It's, it's really, really cool to see. Uh, the whole cast really is great, but for me, the scenes theater is definitely Charlize Theron as Furiosa because she's this woman who's just extremely powerful and extremely determined, and yet she's so tortured also deep within. You can really just see so much pain in just her eyes and whatnot, and her performance really is just, she, she lives this character. She is so effective as Furiosa. Um, and you know all the women in this movie, especially like the five wives, like there are no pushovers at all. And George Miller's action direction in this movie is at least ten times better than most of the directors out there who are who are more than half his age. Um, you know his 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 action scenes are so great because there is a real ebb and flow to them. Like I've said this before, that you know your action scene is great when it feels like a dance, and you really feel the flow throughout um, his action scenes. Um, George Miller also understands how visuals and sound can tell a story just as good if not better than exposition and dialogue, which is a mistake I think a lot of directors and writers make. Um, and what's, what's so impressive to me about his direction here is that the tone he manages to pull off in this movie isn't without humor or it's, it, you know, it has lots of moments of just, you know, applause worthy awe. Like it's just, this movie is just so fun to watch. Um, he doesn't let the post-apocalyptic setting drag the mood down, but at the same time, he doesn't let us forget that what's at stake is really, really important and should not be taken for granted, but still, he knows how to have fun with it. Mad Max Fury Road is an amazing movie. I think it's even better than Mad Max 2, The Road Warrior, which everyone considers to be the best in, in the series. I think this is much better um, also. And I really do think you just owe it to yourself if you love action or if you just love movies in general to watch this movie because there's something anyone will be able to appreciate in this movie. And I am calling it now, um, this is the first like franchise blockbuster I've watched since Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 2 that I've wanted to be nominated for Best Picture. Like, I, I want it to be up there. Alright, so those are my thoughts on Mad Max Fury Road. Have you guys seen it? What do you think about it? Did you love it? Did you hate it? Whatever you thought, whether you agree with me or not, please leave me a comment. Let's have a conversation.